Hello and welcome to Cut Twice. Today I want to talk to you about balance mode radiators and the cheapest example of one of those I've been able to find. So a friend told me about the Drop BRM1. Obviously they've got quite a striking design. I was trying to figure out what these drivers are and then it turns out as they explain they're called BRM1s because it's a balance mode radiator. So I had originally thought that both of these were balance mode radiator drivers. However, I have found out that actually only the top one is a balance mode radiator. And then this bottom one is actually a passive radiator. And what they've done is put an identical passive radiator on the back with the theory that the vibration of the front one will be balanced out by the vibration of the back one, which allow them to stay still on your desk. So I was really interested in them and I've never heard a balance mode radiator before. So I was like, how can I find some to listen to? So, so I looked up balance mode radiators and it turns out this company Tectonic seems to make a lot of them. I don't know exactly what other manufacturers use their drivers, but they've got quite a good PDF kind of explaining the concepts behind balance mode radiators. And basically the, the core idea is that when you've got a normal speaker cone, it generates its sound by obviously moving back and forward and the frequency that it moves back and forward. Um, is the sound it generates. But while it's doing that, it starts to resonate within the cone itself. And these will break up modes and cause certain um, forms of distortion in your sound. So what balance mode radio does instead is your theoretical ideal kind of resonating surface would be the disc they've given here. And it'd be an infinitely stiff disc. I mean, with zero mass, I think would be the perfect one. And then as that moves back and forwards, it would generate your air pressure waves and you get your sound. The problem with the voice call that I was talking about before is that when you add that on, it creates a resonating area. So you've got like this mass and that mass will allow kind of resonance modes to set up within the structure of the disc. So what they've done with balance mode radiators is they've added other ring masses throughout the radiating surface that then controls these resonances and by controlling those resonances, you get a much flatter spectrum across the entire kind of output range of the driver. And then you can see here, they've given the examples of how you've got your perfect disc and that's like completely rule of flat. You've got your cone, break up modes as it starts to resonate. And then you've got your balance mode radiator and that's got the flat properties of the disc. And then those resonances have been controlled by these masses so that instead of being large, up and down kind of peaks and troughs. You've just got a couple of small troughs and a little thing there. So it's a really interesting technology. And I was like, I want to hear it. So I was kind of looking into what speakers out there use BRMs. And there's not that many. However, while I was searching the technology, I came across a page explaining balance mode radiators from Cambridge Audio. And that's because Cambridge Audio has a couple of speakers which use these drivers. And you can see they've got a similar graphic kind of giving you a sense of how the different drivers work. And they've got a few different speakers which use this technology. So they've got Aero, Aero Max, MinX and Min Ranges. So the smallest of these is the Min 12s. I think there's been a few different iteration of these Mins. I think I've seen an 11 and possibly like a 10. But I think the most recent version is this Min 12. And as you can see, very, very small. And here they kind of extol the virtues of the Min. And I think they mentioned, yeah, they've got a section kind of explaining BRMs here and why they're so brilliant. And also that the Min 12s have the new bigger driver. So hopefully uh, more volume, more power. And so the cool thing about these Min X Min 12s is they're not that expensive. So, you know, for a single speaker you're looking at 60 pounds which obviously for something that small is not super cheap but it's not too bad and then the fact that it's got this driver technology that you can't really find anywhere else it makes it like a good starting point of you know how can i get hold of one of these how can i listen to one of these and so then it turns out that there's actually quite a lot of these on the second hand market in the uk so you can get one of these min 12 for 28 pounds and then I got a couple of them so I spent about 60 pounds and then I've got a couple that I can kind of work with and play with 
And in actual fact, this is what I was saying about there being more than one model type. They actually have a lot of the various different types that have been released. So you have these uh, Min 22s, which are, I believe, a Min 12 on the top. And then on the lower half, they have like a standard woofer to allow them to do slightly lower frequencies. Because actually one of the limitations of the BRM seems to be that they struggle at lower frequencies. But that's kind of bounced out by the fact that they're so good at doing the full range on a single driver because you can pretty much go from about 100 200 hertz all the way up to 20k um, with a single driver which is pretty crazy and it also means you have no crossover in the areas where your ear is most uh, sensitive and you can see going through the pictures that you know these are quite neat looking little speakers i'm quite excited to see what kind of sound performance you can get out of something this small i think now Time to go do some testing. I've got a little test track that I hope won't trigger any of YouTube's copyright restrictions. Okay, so now I've taken a couple of measurements of the speaker, and it's pretty impressive. Uh, this is zero degrees, so this is looking straight on. And yep, you can see pretty much you're starting rolling off early. Like if you're using a subwoofer, you're going to need to cross it about uh, 200 hertz. But you can see how it's relatively flat, and that that flat extends all the way out to you know about 10 hertz and that's all from a single driver which is the really fascinating thing about these balance mode radiators is they can just output over such a wide range of frequencies and again that really sensitive bit of your ear there no crossover i've noticed with a lot of these balance mode radiators that there is this weirdness at around 10k to 20k and i've seen peaks and troughs this driver within this Cambridge audio speaker seems to have like a peak around here at about 15 um, and then levels out again but really nothing that looks to me like you couldn't just EQ it so if you've got the capability to EQ and I honestly recommend EQing almost any speaker system um, yeah calm that right down and then here I've got a measurement at a 45 degree angle just to get a sense of what the off axis looks like and it's also excellent like you know pretty reasonably flat I, get, I know it's a bit bumpy but again i think you can secure it and interestingly enough that peak past 10 that we, i think it's peaking at about 1600 has now gone away so you seem to have actually a nicer response well i say nicer it seems the response doesn't have this big peak however it, it really depends on whether you're eqing and also you know what your ears are doing out there i know my hearing drops off at about 16k so anything beyond that really isn't going to matter to me but generally very good you can look at the two of them together and you can see just how well the on axis and off axis track each other until that so where is that so it's about 12k they start to separate so i assume that means there's some beaming above this uh point and I'm not sure exactly the mechanics of beaming within a balance mode radiator as they do work a little bit differently to your standard kind of just cone driver or dome driver. So final thoughts, I think this is an incredible speaker. I'm actually thinking about setting up a little 2.1 system in this office using it just because the sound quality is great. I think you do need a bit of EQ for the high end, but as long as you've got a subwoofer to cover the low frequencies, it's a really solid speaker. Wide directivity and the fact you get such an even sound just means it sounds great kind of in any room. And I think also due to this, it gives one of the most stable locked in stereo images that I've ever heard. Like normally I kind of get my speakers set up and then once I've done a bit of EQ, the stereo image kind of locks in, sounds good, great. But with these i couldn't believe how i just put them up played it and it was perfect rock solid um re genuinely fascinating and, and i think 
it's made me think a lot more about balance mode radiators as a potential part of say a three-way speaker i think the fact that you can move the crossover right out of that sensitive region it means they're probably the best option for a mid-range when you're making a speaker so i'm excited to to see if i can engineer some kind of three-way using them as well i'm definitely very excited for the drop speaker so far it doesn't look like they're going to provide any measurements and so i think i would probably want to wait and see what the measurements are like before i invested yeah i think there's high potential that they'll measure well and could be a great speaker so yeah all, all in all thoroughly impressed uh excited to experiment more with balance mode radiators mm -hmm.